What if events had unfolded differently in the Marvel Universe? What if something else happened in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? What if Gwen was killed by Electro? Welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to a brand new Marvel's What If. In our present multiverse, there are billions of ever still increasing realities, and it all started with one altered choice. An altered choice that would send ripples throughout the entire multiverse. And because of this choice, there are so many different events that can unfold. And I do want to say, this Marvel's What If has never really been requested, and it's something that I always wanted to do. What if it was another villain that had killed Gwen on that fateful night in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, before the events of the Clock Tower? What do you think could happen in this Marvel's What If? Well, my fellow watchers, let's dive deep as we take a look. Max Dillon could not believe what had happened to him, as he was still shocked. Max had just met his hero, Spider-Man, and he was lost for words. Max had usually heard the quote about not meeting one's hero, and he decided that it was dumb, because Max was glad that he had met Spider-Man. Max smiled dreaming as he recounted the events that led him to meeting the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Max had been on his way to work, as he was an electrician working at Oscorp. He had seen a car coming towards him, but he thought that it was the end of his life, as there was no way the car would miss him. This is the end of the road, Max had said, and that's when he saw Spider-Man. Max had been rescued by Spider-Man, and he could not be any more lucky. Max Dillon had been so elated that he got to still be alive, and that he had been saved by his hero. Max thought that his day could not get any better, but then, Spider-Man told him that he was his eyes and ears, and that blew his mind off the roof. I'm Spider-Man's best friend, Max had kept repeating to himself as he went into his place of work. Max believed that absolutely nothing could sour his mood, as today was his best day ever. As he went to work, forgetting about what day, nothing can spoil my whole week, Max said. As he bounced off, to work. Peter was always late, and unlike most people, he, it was not his fault. As he was not lazy, Peter was late to even his graduation ceremony, and he did not think that it would do him any favors. Immediately, Peter settled down. He found out that he had missed Gwen's speech, and he felt downcast. Gwen, Peter said softly in his head, as he had been getting flashbacks of her father's plea to leave her alone. It all happened so fast when Peter was fighting the Rhino, who was carrying a truck full of plutonium throughout the city. Peter had been on a call with Gwen while he combated the criminal, a scenario that happened very often. And then, Peter had a vision of Gwen's father, and it reminded him of the promise that he had made. Gwen's father, Captain Stacy, had died while combating the lizard, and he knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Captain Stacy had made Peter promise him on his dying breath that he would stay away from Gwen, and Peter promised. Coming out from the battle, Peter found out that he had to keep his promise, and it did not seem easy as he thought it would have been, as being with Gwen was the only time he could be who he was without pretending, as she always knew Peter's secret identity. Gwen was also his girlfriend, and he also had a lot of emotions attached to her. Peter had successfully tried in forgetting about the promise he made to Captain Stacy, but after the vision, he could not deny it again. I have to break up with her, Peter said. Peter had missed most of his graduation ceremony, but he had made it just in time to get his certificate. Peter got his certificate along with Gwen, and they shared a kiss in front of everyone. Peter suddenly started to feel like a Judas who had kissed and betrayed a loved one as he was about to break up with Gwen Stacy. Peter and Gwen were having a wonderful time, and he just had to spoil it. Peter told Gwen about her father's wishes and the promise that he had made to him and watched as she went grim. Peter then told her that he was not sure that he would be able to continue the relationship with her, but Gwen was not having it. 
It pained Peter more, as he had thought that she would not put up a fight and make things easier, but she did not. After a lot of heart-rendering discussions, they decided that it would be best if they just remained friends, as they could not lose each other completely. Both Gwen and Peter were fine with that, but deep inside, they knew that they wanted more. Harry had been away for a very long time, but now he was back. Harry Osborne went into a private boarding school but he had come back at his father's imminent request. Harry's father, Norman, had a terminal illness, and Harry feared that he was going to soon give up fighting, as time was almost up. Harry thought that his father had just wanted to see him and give him his blessing, and of course, the company, but he got the shock of his life. Harry got to find out that his father's terminal sickness was genetic, and he was at the age where it started to manifest. Harry's world was suddenly turned upside down, as he realized that he might not have much time left to spend in the world. Norman immediately comforted Harry by giving him a device that contained his life's work. Norman confined in Harry and told him that the device contained his research on how to cure the disease. Harry's hope that had been completely shattered now shined dimly, as he still had doubts. If my father had not been able to find a cure for this illness, what chance would I have? Harry asked himself. Harry then put away the negative thoughts, as he decided that it would not aid him in any aspects of his life. When Harry departed from his father, he felt a little surge of hope that he would be able to cure himself using his father's research. The next day, Peter heard the news that Norman Osborne had passed away, and that Harry was the new CEO. Peter further found out that Harry was in town and he was elated. Harry and Peter were childhood friends, and something told Peter that they may have still been best friends if Harry hadn't gone away to school. Peter was still feeling gloomy about his breakup with Gwen. Even though they told themselves that they would still be friends, it hurt. Peter decided that going to see an old friend would be very refreshing as he would take his mind off matters. Peter quickly started preparing to go and meet Harry, and also offer his condolences for the death of his father, Norman. Harry was surely glad to see Peter Parker. Since the death of his father, and him becoming the new CEO, the pressure on him was immense. Harry figured that he needed a familiar face to spur him back, and Peter had arrived. The two had discussed so many things, and Harry was glad that they had met. Harry further got to know that Peter worked as a photographer, and he was sort of Spider-Man's personal cameraman. Harry made a mental note to ask Peter how he knew when Spider-Man would appear and take pictures of him. One of the reasons Harry had been eager to come back, besides the fact that his father was on his last legs, was the Spider-Man as Harry had read so much about abroad. Harry hoped that he would also be able to witness the hero or villain, as some critics called him, in action one day and get to meet him personally. After his discussion with Peter, Harry's spirits were filled, and they were lifted up. They quickly promised to be in touch as they exchanged their contacts. Today was Max's birthday, and he was very cheerful. On the other days, Max had not thought much about his birthday, but since Spider-Man had saved him, he had been on cloud nine. Max had been telling all those who cared to listen that he was Spider-Man's best friend. Even though he had received some unpleasant comments from the people he had told, it did not phrase him. Max Dillon was currently on his way to work as an electrician at Oscorp, and he was literally bouncing there. Max remembered what he said about nothing spoiling his whole week, and he smiled as his week still remained joyful. Max entered the facility, and he passed by some electrical modified eels, and he shivered inside. As the creatures scared him, Max knew that the facility he worked at did some frisky experiments, and he often wondered what it would be like to be at the receiving end of the experiments. Max pinned the creatures, as he also believed that organisms should be free to do what they wanted to do, but he was just an electrician. Max heard that his boss, Norman, had died, 
and that the new CEO was his son, Harry. Max wondered what it would be like to be a CEO as he walked up to the source of the problem to fix it. I would stop all these freakish experiments, Max concluded in his mind. But then he now asked himself what Oscorp would be without the experiments. After successfully making his way to the malfunctioning machine, Max started working on it. Max noted how the tank of eels were directly below him, but he swatted the breathing fear away as he worked in more terrifying situations before. Then suddenly, the equipment he was working on shocked him literally. Max was so stunned by the high voltage that passed through him that he fell into the glass tank that contained the electrical modified eels. The eels were suddenly terrified when they noticed an alien body among them and they reacted to their instincts and released their electrical impulse. Thousands of electrical voltages passed through Max, and he screamed in agony. The voltage of electrical eels was so extreme that the glass of the tank broke. There is only so much voltage of electricity a man can take, and Max Dillon was pushed past it. An average human being would have died if that amount of voltage passed through them, but the eels that shocked Max were not normal. The eels had been genetically modified, and because of that, they transformed and mutated Max Dillon. Without even knowing it yet, because he had been blacked out, Max became a live conductor and generator of electricity. Gwen was really nervous about how Peter would take the news. Even though they said that they were no longer dating, it still felt like they were. Gwen was still feeling nervous over Peter's reaction to her news, and that spoke volumes. Gwen had seen a scholarship opportunity at Oxford, and she had applied for it, as it also came with a great job opportunity. Gwen knew that if she was successful and she took it, that it meant that she was going to London, away from Peter Parker. Peter would not be okay with it, but he would act like it was. Gwen predicted as she had started to correctly predict Peter's course of action, because they had been together for some time. Gwen just wanted him to claim that he loved her, not with standing her father's wishes. Gwen was her own person, and she could make decisions for herself. Gwen decided that the next time she saw Peter, she would tell him about her leaving him and traveling to London. Peter had been the one to see Gwen first, as he really wanted their supposed friendship to work. They started chatting awkwardly, and it surprised Peter how they had gone from kissing one another to not even being able to maintain eye contact. Peter was then further surprised when Gwen told him that she may be leaving New York for London. Peter was dumbfounded, and before he could even say anything, there was a blackout at Times Square, and he decided that he needed to look into it. Peter quickly postponed his meeting with Gwen, and then he changed into a Spider-Man suit as he went to confront the threat. Gwen had followed Peter, and she decided that things could not continue going as they were. Gwen decided that she had to take matters into her own hands, and the opportunity soon presented itself. The creature that was responsible for the power outages was vaguely familiar. Peter had tried remembering, and it seemed successful because for some reason, the electrical creature thought Peter was his friend. Everything was going smoothly until a police sniper had tried to shoot at the creature. That was when the problem started, as the creature was suddenly enraged. The creature started accusing Peter of betraying him, and Gwen could not blame him. Suddenly, Gwen remembered that she knew the creature. It was a guy that she had met at the elevator quite recently. The electrical creature started destroying buildings, and even Spider-Man had a hard time trying to calm him down. Gwen quickly decided that she had to do something, as she was tired of staying on the sidelines. She decided that maybe if she proved to Peter that she was a hero too, who was willing to fight for them, that he might accept to fight for them too. She decided that maybe if she proved to Peter that she was a hero too, who was willing to fight for them, that he might accept to fight for them too. Gwen quickly ran and evaded most of the destruction and missed the screams of Spider-Man who sounded surprised and panicked. Gwen stood behind the electrical creature and called out to him as she thought that he would recognize her and stop the amount of destruction that he was causing. Gwen thought that she would be able to calm down, but too late. 
Did she realize her mistake? Max Dillon was currently in a pure state of energy, and as he turned, electrical charges from his body blasted her away, even as the thousands of volts passed through her body. Gwen! Spider-Man shouted, as Spider-Man forgot about the fight with Max and ran towards her body. Spider-Man reached her body, which was blackened. He kneeled down by her side and checked for her pulse, but he felt none. Peter cried out in grief as he told himself that he could not lose her too. Peter checked for her pulse again, but nothing was there. She was dead and burnt alive. Spider-Man kneeled at her side, as time meant nothing to him. Several observers started recording him with their phones and cameras, and then the police sirens started drawing closer, and that seemed to snap him back to reality. Peter stood to observe the area, and he discovered that Max had escaped. Peter took one more look at the observers who did nothing to even help Gwen, and then he looked at her dead body. Something inside Peter Parker broke, as he was filled with immense rage. Cops quickly surrounded him and required that he raised his hands and surrender. Spider-Man decided there and then that he had been wasting his time trying to help the civilians of his city. Spider-Man decided that he was no more going to keep helping an ungrateful set of people. We would fire on the count of three, the cops screamed at Spider-Man. Two, before they could shout three, Peter quickly shot webs that snagged a car and threw it at them. The cops all fled for cover, and when they had recovered and got back their standing, Spider-Man was gone with the body of the girl. Harry had started developing the symptoms of the disease, and it did not go well with him. When Norman had told Harry that the disease was genetic, Harry was hoping on the slightest chance that it skipped him, or it would not show until he was already well aged, and that hope was shattered. Since Harry started noticing the symptoms, he had started going through his father's research. Harry had to commend his father, as the work was very detailed. Harry then deduced from all of his father's research that the blood of Spider-Man could cure him. It was a dead end for Harry as he did not know Spider-Man, nor have any means to contact him. Then, Harry suddenly remembered Peter. Harry beamed as he remembered that Peter somehow got pictures of Spider-Man, and it was as if two of them had an agreement. Harry planned to capitalize on the special relationship that existed between Peter and Spider-Man, as all he just needed was a little sample of Spider-Man's blood. As Harry planned to contact Peter, he saw in the news, and he was shocked at the headlines, Spider-Man Gone Rogue. A video clip of people were playing on the news, and Harry saw how an electrical creature, whom the news company was now calling Electro, blasted an unarmed civilian. Harry could not shake the feeling that he knew the woman that was blasted from somewhere as her face looked really familiar. Harry's thoughts were quickly confirmed as Spider-Man screamed Gwen, and it rushed to the aid of the fallen woman. It did not take time for Harry to put all the pieces of the puzzle together, as he realized that Gwen Stacy was Peter's girlfriend. This means that Peter is Spider-Man. Harry asked himself as it sounded too far-fetched, as Peter seemed harmless for a guy. But then, Harry started noticing the similarities. Harry almost slapped himself as he realized that he had been best friends with Spider-Man all this while. Harry now started beaming with joy, as it meant that his sickness was almost as good as gone, because Peter would not hesitate to give him his blood. Even if he refuses, I can blackmail him into doing my bidding, Harry said, as he smiled evilly. After the death of Gwen Stacy, all Peter Parker felt was an empty void inside of his body, and nobody had been able to contact him. Peter had been receiving calls from Harry, but they all went to voicemail. Peter deduced that he was just calling to give his condolences like every other person was. Peter could not still forget that day that Gwen died. Peter had swung through the city with her dead body in his arms, and Peter was sobbing uncontrollably. Once Peter had arrived at her house, he had laid her body inside her room. But before he left, her mother had bursted into the room. And when she saw her daughter's body, she broke down in tears, in rage, as she cursed 
Spider-Man. She stated that Spider-Man was responsible for taking her husband, and now he had taken her daughter too. Peter's heart shattered as if it was pulled from his chest, as he remembered the promise that he had made to the dying Captain Stacy. He quickly exited the room, feeling much more guilty and rageful, and all the anger he felt was for Electro in the city. Peter was pulled out from memory lane as there was a knock on the door and he was quickly informed that Peter had a visitor. Peter went out to check who it was, and he discovered that it was Harry. As if Peter's world could not already be upside down, he found out that Harry knew that he was Spider-Man. Peter had quickly gone angry, but Harry had to calm him down. Harry told Peter that things had not been going well for him too, as he had been removed as the CEO of his father's company, after he was framed by the board members for accidentally killing Max Dillon. Harry told Peter that they could both get what they wanted, revenge. Peter smirked as he saw that Harry was speaking his language. Peter had given Harry a sample of his blood, but they needed to break into Oscorp's facility in order to get the right equipment to use them. Peter had broken in easily, and they immediately went inside. They had broken into the facility that day, and the observers were surprised at seeing Spider-Man breaking into Oscorp, as he was supposed to be a hero and not a villain. The news quickly spread, and it reached the ears of someone who could do something. It reached the ears of Electro. Electro could not believe what he had done. It was after Spider-Man had checked the pulse of the woman that he knew that he had killed her. Max felt so guilt-ridden and ashamed that he ran away by using electrical cables. Currently, he was in an abandoned plant, and he had been practicing on using his powers. Now, Max had more control over them, and he could now solidify himself. Max had taken it as his duty to do so, as he would not want to kill anybody else. Max also started helping and saving other people, but he did that in secret, with anyone knowing they could possibly expose him. What aided him was electrical cables and connections. It was on his usual journey around the city that he saw that Spider-Man was breaking into the Oscorp facility, and he started feeling guilt-ridden again, as he knew that it was all his fault. Electro sort of knew that the woman had meant a lot to Spider-Man. He had sent Spider-Man on the path of evil, and now he would bring him back. Electro decided as he went to Oscorp's facility via electrical channels. Electro had arrived at the facility in no time, as he was on the advantages of the electrical travel. Immediately Electro arrived, he saw Harry injecting himself with a reddish liquid that he deduced was blood. Immediately, Spider-Man saw Electro. He quickly went after him and started offloading punches on him. Electro did not bother to fight back, as he knew that he deserved it even as Peter buried him in walls of the facility and kept pounding on him. Spider-Man eventually got tired of beating up a defenseless Electro and asked him why he did not want to fight back. Electro simply told him that he was sorry for what he had done. With all these things that were going on, Harry had set up a machine that Electro soon got to know was a bomb. Harry told both of them that even though he would love to stay and chat, that he had other plans. Harry intended to blowing up Oscorp's facility and bury all of the board members and Peter alongside with them as he had gotten what he wanted from him. Harry immediately trapped both Peter and Max in a tank as he quickly took off via a helicopter. Max succeeded in convincing Peter to help, as Gwen would have done the same. Peter agreed, and together, they were able to break the tank. Electro quickly disabled the bomb by short-circuiting it, and the building was saved. Peter had turned himself in after the incident, as he felt that he deserved it. Peter had harmed innocent people, and he had been blinded by his rage and revenge. Peter also felt the responsibility for the death of Captain Stacy and Gwen. One thing, however, that made Peter happy was that he had not given Harry his blood. Peter had just given him blood from a hospital donor wing, laced with adrenaline. Peter had then followed his father's research, and he discovered a video that proved that his father fled from Norman, who wanted him to do crazy and evil experiments. 
After that, Peter became wary of Harry. Any time Peter imagined what Harry's face would look like when he realized that he had not gotten his blood sample, he almost felt better. Peter had forgiven Electro, and from what he heard, he was doing a good job. As the city's new hero, Peter knew that he could escape at any time, but he decided that he would not until the world really needed him. This turned out to be soon as a portal opened in his jail cell and sucked him in. And that is going to be it, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to a brand new Marvel's What If episode of what if Electro had killed Gwen Stacy? What do you think would have happened? Do you think that it would have played out this way in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Well, I hope you enjoyed this Marvel's What If on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, as it was an unexpected what if. There's so many ways that we could continue this storyline, and it's a really different fractured universe, as it was Electro that had killed Gwen earlier. But that being said, if you enjoyed this Marvel's What If and would like to see more Miss the Part videos, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, as it really goes a long way to promoting and helping the channel get on recommended. And I would highly recommend that you check out the Patreon, as it's starting at just $1 a month. That being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video video. Peace out.